Hello, I'm Tom Hathaway. I'm wearing my BA hat to symbolize that anyone in an organization might do business analysis, whether or not they have the job title business analyst. So let's talk business analysis. This knowledge nugget introduces the concept of leveling or exploding processes on a data flow diagram, explains why it's important, and how to analyze interview notes to reveal lower level processes in preparation to leveling the diagram. This simple technique will help you when you are the one wearing the BA hat. One of the simplest tools for visualizing project scope is a context level data flow diagram or DFD. Beyond making the project scope visible, the DFD gives you the ability to discover, analyze, and represent functional and non-functional requirements. However, as revealing and useful as the context diagram may be, it is certainly lacking a lot of detail. In data flow diagramming lingo, detail is revealed by exploding or leveling complex processes to identify internal processes and flows that are not visible at the higher level. By exploding a process, you'll also identify internal data stores, meaning places where the data just sits within the process waiting until it is used by another process. Delving into this level of detail may also allow you to discover additional missing data and processes. Each of the internal processes creates and consumes specific data. If you draw a data flow diagram at this more detailed level, you uncover internal data flows and data stores that are more specific and detailed as well. Any process at any level of detail is a potential candidate for exploding. The only factor to consider is whether you understand the process sufficiently to predict how change will affect it. For our working example, we're going to use the Enter Orders Context Level DFD that we created based on interview notes from Mary, the project sponsor. At the context level, I only have one process, namely Enter Orders. To understand that process at the appropriate level of detail, I need details, meaning I'm going to look inside the Enter Orders process and define how it currently works in Mary's organization. You may want to pause the video to familiarize yourself with the context level diagram and the interview notes at this time. Given that all I have at this time are interview notes from the project sponsor, I start by analyzing them to find these lower level details. Specifically, I'm looking for actions that represent lower level processes performed within Enter Orders. We express actions as verbs using active voice, e.g., Enter Orders is active, whereas Orders are entered is passive. When I find a verb in the passive voice, I convert it to active voice to evaluate if it is a legitimate process. Specifically, I try to give each prospective process a proper active verb direct object name as recommended for naming processes on a DFD, e.g., check inventory, sort mail. To make sure that my lower level diagram is an accurate depiction of how the enter orders process really works today, I involve a representative from the group who actually does the work. Managers typically do not need to know the level of detail that I need. Assuming they were promoted from the ranks, they probably know how they did the work back then but they may not be up to date on exactly how the work is done today. To get a truly accurate and current picture of the enter orders process, I review the narrative and identify the internal processes with Paul, an order entry clerk. Since processes on a DFD are actions, we simply look for verbs stating or implying actions and create a simple table. I'll read through the interview notes from Mary, manager of order entry department, to demonstrate how we identify potential actions. The customer triggers all the action in our department. Trigger action is an active verb with a direct object, so I jot it down as a likely candidate. Reading on, we receive an order with or without payment, a complaint or a payment with or without invoice copy from the customer. Receive is certainly an action, so I add receive orders, complaints, and payments to my list of potential processes. 
These are separated and the following actions take place. Are separated is the passive form of the active verb to separate. But the action separate these does not make any sense. What are they separating? I suggest separate orders, complaints, and payments, but that just repeats what they received and Paul explains that they call it sort mail. That's short and says it all, so I add that to my list. If it is an order, we verify an existing customer's credit status. I can certainly see verify credit as a candidate. And then we verify that the item numbers are valid. To distinguish this action from the verify credit action I just added, I prefer to call this validate items, and Paul has no objection. By checking our inventory file, new customer orders are sent to the credit department. Aha! Send orders to credit makes my list, and for simplicity, Paul suggests shortening that to send orders. And held until they clear a credit check. Hold orders is a legitimate candidate and makes the list. If half payment or more is included, that order is treated as if it were a credit order with good credit. I'm not too sure what to do with this parenthetical phrase right now, so I make a note to revisit this later. Valid orders are accumulated. I think accumulate valid orders has potential as an internal process. And grouped into shipping zones. Group orders makes the list. And transmitted to the warehouse to be filled. Transmit valid orders sounds good to me, so I add it. After an order is filled, fill order is an active verb with a direct object, so it makes the list as well. I could continue reading through the entire interview notes, but I think this suffices to give you the flavor of the process. For practice, you might want to review the remaining interview notes and complete this step on your own. Now that you have a list of potential internal processes, you need some additional rules to confirm that these are indeed good candidates. First off, processes have to do something that will ultimately be represented in the form of data. In other words, a process transforms incoming data into outgoing data. If the action affects physical material, e.g. shipment, the application will have to know something about the material. Secondly, what the process does has to be within the scope of the process I am analyzing. In this case, enter orders. Each action on my list that meets these criteria is a potential internal process that should show up on my lower level diagram of the process enter orders. All I have to do is go through each row in my table and ask a couple of easy to answer questions. Starting with trigger action, I ask Paul if that action creates any new data. He confirms that it does not. Our discussion reveals that trigger action is not something the order entry personnel do, meaning it is out of scope. As a result, I jot down no in the column indicating whether this will show up on the exploded diagram. Moving on, Paul explains that receive documents is just someone picking up the mail, which also does not create any new data. As a result, it is also not an internal process. Sort mail, on the other hand, actually changes things by separating orders, complaints, and payments into three separate stacks for further processing. Since this is done by the order entry clerk assigned that duty for the day, it is a legitimate internal process. Verify credit results in the clerk stamping the order credit OK, credit not OK, or new customer. Those actions create new data which makes verify credit an internal process of interest. Validate items separates orders on which all item numbers and descriptions match items in our inventory file from orders with mismatches, which also makes it a good internal process. Send orders to the credit department does not add any data, so it is not an internal process of interest. Hold orders is actually something the credit department does, which makes it out of scope for the enter orders process. Again, eliminating it as an internal process for our purposes. Accumulate valid orders does not add new data since it's simply adding valid orders to a stack until it's time to send them to the warehouse. To prepare the valid orders for the warehouse, 
the order entry clerk has to group orders into shipping zones, which does add new data, the shipping zone, to each order, meaning this is another valid internal process. The warehouse performs the fill order function, making it definitely out of scope for the order entry department. Assuming you completed the table as suggested earlier, you should find that all of the remaining candidates fail since they are either done by the warehouse, accounting, or customer service, making them out of scope for our project. As you can see, out of the rather lengthy interview notes from Mary, we actually identified only four internal processes that are part of the enter orders process. Sort mail, verify credit, validate items, group orders. A level two data flow diagram will show how these four internal processes transform the incoming flows to create all outgoing flows. While drawing the diagram, we may discover missing flows and or missing internal processes. That's not a bad thing. It's one of the major benefits of exploding or leveling a process. Given that you have these four processes, the next step will be to pick these processes on a detail level DFD that shows how each of them consumes and creates data within the enter orders process and how they convert the incoming mail into valid orders for the warehouse. Creating that diagram, however, is the topic of a different knowledge nugget. Thank you for viewing this knowledge nugget. Now that you know how to identify internal processes that will become visible on a lower level data flow diagram of a process, make good use of this technique when you are the one wearing the BA hat. Thank you.